This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, it's Tuesday, which in the normal run of things would mean I'm doing a top five video and this is not what we're doing today because very occasionally I simply can't, when I'm coming up with these lists, narrow it down to five. So this is top ten Tuesday today. Let me tell you the story. Uh, I know there's one or two other guitar teachers watch this channel and I'm sure um, they've probably had this same experience as me. Occasionally, just now and again, you'll get a student, usually an adolescent, and one of the first conversations I usually have with a new student is, you know, so what sort of music do you like then? And they'll tell you what their personal tastes are, you know, what they like, what they dislike, and so on. But very occasionally, you'll get a student who says, well, I don't know, I don't really listen to music. And, you know, the first time that happened, it, it sort of begged the question, well, what was it that made you want to play the guitar then? But then, a few years ago, gosh, getting on for about 15 years ago, I um, decided I wanted a hobby that wasn't music-related, and I took up watercolour painting, of all things. And, you know, as somebody that was getting into that new hobby... Um, you know, I hadn't been kind of trawling around art galleries looking at the works of Constable and Turner and I can't think of any other watercolour painters' names. But, you know, I, mean, I, I didn't have that pre-existing, um, you know, kind of interest or fascination with it. It was just something I decided to do on a whim. And some people uh, take up the guitar like that. And when they do and when they come to me for lessons, I, I kind of see it as a way of, you know, maybe proselytizing a little bit and, and getting people into, you know, um, certain styles of music. But in this case, with this young lad, um, I didn't really have to do that. Um, he kind of started on his own journey of discovery. I got a phone call from his dad and he was saying, um, you know, Tim's music musical taste has really taken off. He's, he's kind of quizzing me all about... Um, you know, the, the right albums to listen to. And then in the next lesson, uh, the lad himself said to me, um, so what album should I be listening to then if I want to get into, like, listening to rock music? What's the best stuff to listen to? So these are my suggestions. Um, most of these albums, all but one, come from the 1970s, and there's a good reason for that. I honestly believe that the 1970s was the golden age of classic rock. It's when all of the bands who were, you know, kind of creating those classic albums, they they had the the enviable advantage of not having grown up listening to a lot of classic rock albums and you know kind of the heads full of preconceived ideas so uh that's why i've chosen the albums that i've chosen and these are the albums that i've chosen starting with machine head by deep purple yeah machine head by deep purple uh for me the the early to mid 70s the three bands that really kind of um set the wheels in motion and you know kind of defined rock music as as rock music rather than just you know an evolution from you know kind of uh, blues and and psychedelia and stuff um those three bands were deep purple black sabbath and led zeppelin and they all feature on this list um so you know, I could have chosen many Led Zeppelin albums, uh, sorry, Deep Purple albums, uh, but this is the one that I chose because, you know, well, Smoke on the Water, Highway Star, uh, Space Trucking, um, you know, you have to have a pretty strong reason to not choose that album, um, if, you know, to exclude those songs. So that's why this album's on the list. And, um, yeah, I just think it's a great album. Next. Live and Dangerous. By Thin Lizzy. Yeah, now this one, um, it's not my favourite Thin Lizzy album. Um, my favourite Thin Lizzy album is Black Rose. Um, you know, I just think it's w where they peaked. But Live and Dangerous is is a good album. I mean, there's um, some debate about how live it actually is, but we won't get into that. Um, <clears throat> the, the thing is that 
pre-Black Rose, if you wanted um, a, a good idea of what Thin Lizzy were about as a band, if you wanted all of their strongest material all in one particular collection and, you know, the, the definitive versions of it, I mean, you know, this is the album to have, isn't it? I mean, you know, The Boys Are Back In Town, Cowboy Song, Rosalie, Jailbreak, I mean, the list goes on. It's just, you know, a, a classic rock album and it documents, I think, one of the um, the most important bands from that era and that is why that one's on the list. Next. A Night at the Opera by Queen. Yeah, I mean... Bohemian Rhapsody, that that says it all, doesn't it? You can't, if you if you're putting together a list of um, albums for the the newbie to classic rock, uh, the albums that you know they they should kind of really consider prioritising listening to first. This one's got to be there. I mean, not just Bohemian Rhapsody, but you know, you're my best friend, love of my life, thirty nine. So many great songs on this album, and it was like I said at the top of the video. You know, name another album that sounded like this. Name another album that, um, you know, where you can say, ah, yes, well, what they're doing is they're kind of going for the vibe on this album or for, that they've obviously listened to or nothing. It just came out of, well, nowhere, really. And, um, you know, you, you've got to have a Queen album on, on a list like this. And this is the one to have, I think. Next. Van Halen by Van Halen. Yeah, now it's been um, well documented. I've said many times that I am not the world's biggest Van Halen fan. Um, what can I tell you? Um, the, the, the band, the, the music that they make, it just doesn't flip my coin or float my boat. Um, but you cannot deny the impact that Eddie's guitar playing had on rock music um you know it was when something this fresh and inventive came along he didn't invent two-handed finger tapping it's been a like a a feature of flamenco guitar for you know centuries i guess and you know steve hackett was doing it in genesis well before this album came out and you know robert fripp was doing it in king crimson but that misses the point. Eddie was the one that really kind of exploited this technique and, you know, made it something more than just um, a, a kind of niche thing. It really did enter the mainstream thanks to Eddie. And, you know, for that reason alone, this album simply has to be on the list. Next. Highway to Hell by ACDC. Yeah, you got to have a bit of ACDC, don't you? Um, I was actually debating, um, and I still haven't really fully convinced myself I've made the right choice here. It was basically between this and Back in Black, and I literally just flipped a coin. Um, you know, for me, Highway to Hell, I mean, you know, the title track, what else have we got there? I'm referring to some notes here. Um, Shot Down in Flames is a great song. Uh, Girls Got Rhythm. You know, it's just tongue-in-cheek uh, rock music. It's, it's good time party music with great kind of bluesy, crunchy, hard rocking riffs. And, you know, fantastic album. And, you know, as I say, if you have to have an ACDC album on a list like this, and I think you do, this is probably the one to have. Next. Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Yeah, Dark Side of the Moon. It's just, I mean, do I really need to tell you why? It's its just an album that has to be on any kind of list like this. Um, I don't just think it's one of the great classic rock albums. I think it's one of the most important works of, of art of the uh, latter half of the 20th century. It is just magnificent in every way, shape and form. You know, I mean, let, let's go through a couple of the songs. The Great Gig in the Sky. Again, name another song that, that had been, that was anything like that, that, that they could have thought, oh, let's do something a bit like that. No, there isn't. It's just, you know, it, it's fresh and it's interesting and it was new at the time and it's timeless. Uh, speaking of time, you've got time, you've got um, money. Um, <laughs> how many other, um, you know, kind of, big hit singles can you think of that were in 7-4 time for example and for me the just the way this album closes with brain damage and eclipse just that line where and and the sun is eclipsed by the moon i still even thinking about that get shivers down the back of me uh, spine thinking about that it really is just a, a masterpiece of an album and it simply had to be on this list next can't buy a thrill by steely dan 
Yeah, now this might surprise some people. Were Steely Dan a classic rock band? Well, there was certainly a rock band. There was certain, I would say, yeah, it it um, it definitely comes in under the uh, under the heading of rock music. And this is what I meant earlier on in the video when I said that um, the seventies was the, the the golden age of of, of classic rock. Um, you know, if you think about the period of time between say 1970 and 1980, you think of all of the different genres of rock music that came out then you had the whole kind of um you know kind of heavy metal was uh beginning to emerge you know uh you had the new wave of british heavy metal that's going to make an appearance on the list uh shortly you had you know kind of um the kind of west coast eagles kind of country rock sort of thing you had punk as well um you know all of these different genres and uh, of rock that came out in the 70s and this firmly fits in there clever songwriting fantastic musicianship you know just just a brilliant album from start to finish um when it comes to steely dan again i was torn between uh two albums it was either this one or pretzel logic and this one won in the end because it's just got I, I just love all the songs on it you know i mean do it again um change of the guard midnight cruiser brooklyn owes the charmer under me Ch you know all this great sort of stuff um you know just just to sort of represent the more sophisticated uh, side of rock music i think you have to have a steely dan album on the list and this is the one i chose next led zeppelin 4 by led zeppelin I said there'd be some Led Zeppelin on the list, didn't I? Um, and, well, you know, stay away to heaven. Do I need to say any more? Um, it's one of those songs that, um, because you've heard it that many times, that it, it tends to be... I don't know about you, but I tend to often just not listen to it because I think, well, I know what that sounds like and, you know, it's I don't need, need to hear that again. So I'll maybe go, you know, a year without listening to this album or that song in particular. And then when you do listen to it, it's like you're hearing it again for the first time and it it just kind of gets you how how incredible it is, you know. Um, and, you know, I mean, other songs on this album, When the Levee Breaks, Rock and Roll, uh, Black Dog, Battle of Evermore. Um, you just, I mean, name a weak moment on this album. Um, you can't. You have to have a Led Zeppelin album on a list like this, and this is the one that I chose. So there you go. Next. Paranoid by Black Sabbath. And uh, making up the uh, the final one of the big three, I said uh, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and uh, Black Sabbath. Uh, here we come to Paranoid. These albums aren't in any order of ranking, by the way. I'm not saying that an album that appears later on the list is better or worse than an album that appears uh, earlier on the list. The, this is just the order that they occurred to me in. And, you know, I mean... This is uh, this is the band that really gave birth to heavy metal, you know, and I think this is probably where they really hit their stride. Um, and I, it's just a fantastic album. I mean, obviously the title track, but you know, you you get the sort of more reflective, um, you know, uh, more sophisticated stuff again, like Planet Caravan, and you know, and some just absolutely you know, kind of skull-crushing heavy riffs on here, like Fairies Wear Boots. And um, it's just a great album from, from start to finish. Um, Black Sabbath are one of those bands that, for me, when they're good, they're very, very good. And when they're not, it's a little bit sort of meh, to be honest with you. But, you know, as I say, the, the big three, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, there had to be a Black Sabbath album on the list. And for me, it had to be this one. Next. Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. Yeah, the only album that wasn't released in the 70s. This one came from 1982. Um, you know, that whole new wave of British heavy metal movement that started in the late 70s and, you know, lasted till, I guess, you know, the, the sort of mid to late 80s, you could probably say, you know. This album is, for me, the um, the calling card for, for that genre of music. Um, I'm not really a metalhead kind of guy, it has to be said. You know, um, I, a lot of the more um, aggressive, angry-sounding metal to me, it's just I, I can't relate to that amount of um, 
rage in 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 the music but this for me i I don't is it is it classic rock or is it heavy metal or is it on the cusp between whatever it is it is a fantastic album and again it's um was it it was the was it the first album they did with bruce i might be wrong on that i'm prepared to be argued with that but it's you get the sense when you're listening to this album that it's a band who've been around a little while and finally they're hitting their stride. Finally this is where it's all coming together. In much the same way as, like, um, you know, I guess uh, Pink Floyd did with uh, Metal and then, you know, and uh, Dark Side of the Moon and, and from there on in. You know, they've they've been allowed by the record company to, to have a little bit of uh, time to find their feet and to do, you know, and to see what works for them and what doesn't. And this, for me, is the album where it really just kind of, boom that hits the bullseye and as a representative of that genre new wave of british heavy metal which you have to kind of talk about whenever you're talking about classic rock um then i can't think of a better album to include than this one so there you go those are my top 10 um albums that i would say are significant in uh, the uh, realm of classic rock the albums that if you're a new listener to rock music or to just music in general and you want to and you're interested in rock music those would be the ones that i would say yeah listen to these first and then see uh, which direction you want to go in from there um, let me know what your list is. Any list like this is inevitably going to be uh, very personal, very subjective. There are, I know there's some albums that you're probably shouting at the screen now saying, well, why didn't you include that? Well, because it would have been a fortnight long video if I'd included everything I wanted to include. Uh, narrowing it down to five was impossible. Narrowing it down from about 150 down to 10, um, you know, was, uh, was difficult enough. So those are the albums that I've chosen. Let me know what yours would be in the comments below. I genuinely enjoy um, kind of getting your perspective on these things. And that is the video for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it and found it reasonably entertaining. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not drop me a like while you're at it? Don't forget, as always, the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time, where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars. What is not to like about that? It's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend. And I'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now